Hey everybody, Jake Reichbart here. Today I'm going to share with you a lengthy lesson excerpt. So have your guitars ready and we're going to have some fun together arranging a song. Perhaps you've seen some of my many hundreds of solo guitar arrangements I have here on YouTube and the inspiration for these arrangements is right here behind me as you can see. I grew up with this with these vinyls and uh, I draw pretty much from any kind of style imaginable from the pop music of the past hundred years. Everything from Glenn Miller to Van Halen, Alan Holsworth to Motown, and pretty much anything in between. Beatles, I have perhaps uh, 25 Beatles song arrangements, 20 Steely Dan song arrangements, same for uh, Stevie Wonder, rock, hard rock, D Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, and of course tons and tons of classic jazz standards from the 40s and 50s, bebop, dance tunes, movie themes. And if you want to learn how to arrange any of these songs for solo guitar, I can teach you. Just like the excerpt that you're about to watch, which comes from a lesson that runs about 90 minutes, I have nearly 200 additional titles and they are mostly song specific. I enjoy teaching through specific songs because I can show you hands-on how I approach arranging a song. What's nice about these lessons is that I don't just tell you do this and you're done, but rather I'll take you through three or four or five different ways to play the same passage. I'll work with you on dynamics, on articulation, and a hundred other things that you cannot just put to paper. As I mentioned, these lessons run approximately 90 minutes. The introduction, which runs usually 15 minutes, focuses on the right hand and rhythm. And in this introduction, I go through my three pillars of rhythmic arranging. The first principle being melody and bass only. The second being rhythmic arpeggiation. And the third, of course, the down stroke that I play with my right hand fingernails to produce that backbeat that everybody asks me about. Nevertheless, I do have two main method lessons. The first one, how to arrange any song for solo guitar running two hours, and also an introduction to fingerstyle guitar and solo guitar arranging running two hours and 40 minutes. The information about these lessons, the cost, my full lesson list, as well as a link to the full performance of the song that we're working on today is below in the information. So expand the information, take a look, and let's get started. We are finally now at the melody and this first portion of the melody is played over the two chords that we've been laboring on for these past few minutes the E minor and B minor and the melody starts with a pickup notes before the downbeat comes in so depending where you are in the song, you can play them in different locations. So, first of all, what are the notes? They're B, C sharp, D, and E. Often I'll play them in this position here, right up uh, in the middle of the neck. And I'll play the B on the fourth string, ninth fret, C sharp, third string, sixth fret, D, third string, seventh fret, and the E on the 3rd string, ninth fret. Those are, the, those are 16th notes, and they're pickup notes. 1, 2, 3, 4. There are the 4 16th notes that are on the last quarter note of whatever measure you were playing just before you came in with this melody. And you can do it right here. In the 2nd position, it's the same notes, B, C sharp, There's, there's a million ways to play this on the guitar uh, because each any of these notes can be played on any string. You can play any combination of those, but these two are the most logical one ones for this uh, scenario. This entire movement is played against one main chord shape on, in the fifth position. And what I do, I lay my finger down across the upper four strings on the fifth fret. And out of those notes, I actually include the G and the A on top. In addition, I have the notes D and F sharp on strings three and two, which we already described before. And the whole melody 
or parts of the or large part of the melody exists right in this shape. After you play these notes individually, first melody note is the F sharp with a pinky. Play twice, release the pinky and the bar is playing the E, then A on the upper string, with the pinky I play the G, F sharp, and E again. So once again. Second time I vary a little bit. I play with the notes, I play around with the notes a little bit. B, G, A, and F sharp. Put together. cleaner. Then in order to play this particular shape of B minor 7, which is how I view this chord, I play the B with my thumb on the 6th string 7th fret and with my fingers 1, 2 and 3 I play what essentially amounts to an A triad in, in the 5th position. First finger plays the E on the 2nd string, 2nd finger plays the C sharp on the 3rd string and the 3rd finger plays the A on the 4th string. These three notes against the B. And since the melody is E, E, D, I play the E against this chord that I just described, and then the next melody note, which is the D, I play with another B against it. So another way to have done it would be this, it's just playing in thirds, except that from here, not as convenient perhaps to get down here, I just do it this way. So without letting go of the thumb, I move my fingers up two frets, and now I play the D with my first finger, third string, seventh fret, along with the B, and the fourth string, ninth fret with my uh, third finger. And I play a little melody here. On the bass side of things, and the notes would be E, F sharp on the fifth string, fret seven and nine, then A, B on string number four, also fret seven and nine. Seven and nine. That's the end of the melody. Another interval here, a major third. This all against the B minor here. In this case, the melody note is the C sharp on the third string, sixth fret, along with the A on the fourth string, seventh fret. And conclude with a B. This entire section put together really slow. do this, I still have that B under my thumb, and I try to let it sustain as long as possible, because we are under the environment of a B minor chord, so, and repeat. So that 
part of the melody appears exactly twice, exactly the same way. But you can see that from one melody to the next, I improvise a little bit. I change how many times I play this F sharp minor, for example. I might do just... And then I might do... kind of changing the melody a little bit. I'm improvising even within the melody that is a given. I'll play this section now a little bit more up to tempo with a little bit of the backbeat. Mm -hmm. 